Welcome to the Equip Podcast. Here you'll find conversations from people of all different walks of life, sharing their experiences, the things the Lord has taught them, and things to equip you. Equip is based on Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, that talks about equipping God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That is our goal here, to build you up and equip you through seasons of ups and downs in life. That is the way to start the morning, right? How's everybody today? I'm going to grab my blankie. Taylor and this team have done an amazing job. Debbie Stewart, I love you with all my heart. You know, Debbie and I, fun fact, a lot of you may not know this, but we were women's ministers together at Prestonwood in Dallas, and now the Lord has allowed us the sweetness of continuing our friendship, but she has been a mentor and a friend to me for a long time, because you know what? Iron sharpens iron, and those are the kind of friends you want in your life, along with those friends that'll look under the blanket and tell you it's going to be okay, right? right? Well, they did something sweet for me today because we're going to have a very intimate talk this morning. I don't have a lot of time. We've got 30 minutes, so I won't be able to maybe complete the complete uh, scripture dig with you, but that means you get to go before the Lord and dig on your own after we're together. But we set up a little living room area because this morning we're going to talk about the most important strategy to having joy, to hearing from the Lord and being able to fight off the enemy. And that is scripture memory. And I know a lot of people, when you say scripture memory, the first thing they think is, oh my gosh, no, I don't do that. Um, I don't have a good memory. And um, that's kind of what I said to the Lord for a long, long, long time. I'm going to sit in this chair here. Is this awkward? Are y'all good? Because what we decided we wanted to do is set it up just like I do it at home. Now, the one other thing that we don't have, I'm always by the fireplace. My husband thinks I'm a pyromaniac. (laughs) I turn on the fire in the summer um, because I just love the coziness of it. And I just get in my chair. I usually have a lamp that's right behind me that just kind of shines down only on what I'm working on. There's something about, for me personally, I'm not saying anybody has to do this, but I don't know about you, but I get so distracted so easy. So I try to get in a place that's kind of not where everything else is. Does that make sense? And I try to block out all the distraction around me so that I can just truly focus on what he's doing that morning. And so um, that's what I do. I always have a cup of coffee. I usually have something gold around me. That's actually my little blanket holder. I brought it up here. This is my blankie. But anyway, I'll get all covered up, get all snuggled in. I usually have a lap desk. And then I sit down with the Lord. And it has been the sweetest time with him. And, you know, Debbie talked about... um, living bright and beautiful. That is something that the Lord had given me. And, um, and I just challenge you guys to understand that living bright and beautiful comes from reflecting what you're learning in your everyday life. You know, that, that's what we're after. In uh, Corinthians, it talks about that Jesus Christ is who we are to reflect because we now understand him because we've gotten to know God. And so that reflection is all bright and beautiful because we're reflecting him. And it's so sweet. And that's one of the scriptures that I memorized this year. But whenever the Lord began to lay that whole thought idea on my heart, one morning I was studying the word and I just want to show you something. I'm going to lay my mic down really quick. But this is what my Bible looked like. And the Lord said, that's time spent with me. These colors represent something special he taught me. And I just began to see that this, the importance of knowing his word, not just knowing about his word, not just knowing of his word. And I always looked at scripture memory as kind of being something like... um, something that the really devout did, the the really smart people did, the theologians did. And then I began to realize that if I don't have scripture in my heart and ready at all times, I really am taking a weapon out of my tool chest. 
Because you know what? When you're in certain places like Target or something like that, you know, you don't have time to pull out the word and to do all this. And so if you don't have it embedded in your mind, then it's really hard to just fight him when the attack comes. And so today what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you my method of scripture memory. Okay. Now this is not the method. Uh, it's my method. I have a, a f- sweet friendship with Julia Timms. I don't know where she is this morning, but you know, we met for lunch one day. Oh, there she is. We met for lunch one day and just to get to know each other. And then as we talk, we begin to say, well, how are you, how do you study? Like, what do you do? And I've loved it because we found out we both have a love of colors. Like she, she's a pen girl too. And so we did all this, but she inspired me with some ways that she's working on it. And then I begin to ask the Lord some things. So I want to start though this morning reading something because again, we're not doing things um, where we're just going to get a good feeling. We're going to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're basically building a feeling on top of what? You remember? A fact, a fact. So this is what God's word has to say. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways, and I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And that's Psalm 119, 9 through 16. And the message, I'm not going to read the whole thing just for time's sake, but I do want you to hear how it starts. All you young girls that are in here, man, what a way to start, to be able to navigate high school with God's word in front of your face, navigate college with the things that you've learned this weekend. It's just amazing. But it says, how can a young person live a clean life? That's how it starts. And so, you know, we just, that's what we're looking for is to be able to honor the Lord because, you know, Carrie's testimony was so amazing because when God works in us, it's never just for us. He loves us, but it's always so that we can make heaven crowded. So we're drawing other people along with you because I know what you're seeing right now is people don't care what you say. They're watching what you do. And so you can say you're a Christian all day long, but if your life and your choices and your attitudes don't match that up, sometimes you do more damage than good because people are like, oh, shoot, well, you know, she says she's a Christian, but I don't want any of that, you know. So we're going to be looking to how we uh, take this word and make it real in our everyday lives. I want to read something out of my journal as we get started too, because this is what I began to realize for me as a woman, and I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I am very hypersensitive. I feel like I have a flood of either thoughts, feelings, uh, responsibilities. Things are coming at me from all kinds of directions all the time. And I was visiting with, we just bought a house about a year ago, and we have the sweetest neighbors that live behind us. And I noticed that they had what I thought, they had put like this fountain in their backyard that was almost as big as their backyard. Like it was this huge thing with rocks, and it goes all the way down, and it comes out in this one spot. And I was like, girl, y'all have got it going on back here. She looked at me, she said, well, you wouldn't believe why we had to do this. She said, we had to build this because when... She said, when it would rain hard, she said, water would just flood into our backyard. And it's just flooding in and getting all over the back porch. It's tearing up our plants. And it's doing all this work that we put in the yard. Every time it would rain, it would just be a mess coming through there. And so she said, we built this up so that the water now channels through that and then goes to the proper place. And one morning I was sitting and just, the Lord brought that thought to my mind. And this is what I wrote in my uh, journal. And just like how our neighbor built a rock drainage path so that that water has to go where they tell it to go. Says we have to do the same thing. They had a huge problem with unwanted water gushing into their backyard and flooding and ruining everything they had worked so hard to build. So they built a rock path that could not be washed away. 
And it said, and then I had written in my notes because they had already tried a lot of cheaper things that didn't work. And I began to think so much about our spiritual life. We've tried cheaper things in this world to find peace and happiness and joy. And God's saying, I want you to build a path on the rock. I want you to build one that can't be messed up so that when all these thoughts and all these things come flooding into your mind, that through my word, you're going to know how to channel it and tell those thoughts where to go. So I picked a very specific scripture to memorize this morning that we're going to kind of work through. And um, a lot of people will ask me, how do you decide what scriptures you're going to memorize? You remember that little note um, that I gave you guys last night about getting with the Lord and writing down what your issues are and letting him kind of get a good handle on that and help you? Um, Sometimes I'll go and then Google things, you know, like scriptures and things like that. And sometimes I'll feel like the Lord just says to land on this. Let's get this truth in your mind. Like, so, you know, you might see something on Pinterest and I'll, I'll save things, you know, and then kind of go back and say, you know what, that really resonates, right? I'm going to look up that scripture and I'm going to do so. But the biggest thing that he did with me is when I felt the Lord call me, I had read through the whole Bible last year. And y'all, I'm sorry, I was so proud of myself because of the very thing that I am super hypersensitive and I get distracted by the next shiny thing. And so I'll plan to start, I'm going to do this. And I am as, as sincere as a person can be, but then something else will come along and then I'm on to another good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I just, t- I knew the Lord told me last year, you're going to do this. And when I got done, there was such a sense of joy because I had obeyed and because I had done what he asked. And my Bible is just full of the rich color in it that I can easily go back to. So when I got, when the Lord this year said, we're going to memorize scripture, I was like, oh shoot. Okay. I did really good. Lord reading that Bible, but let's not get crazy, you know, um, because I do not even have time. I can't, I can't even remember where I've left my phone. If we didn't have the ping thing on the watch, I would be dead. So, um, but he, but I knew he was saying this is so important. So then as I kind of got started with it, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to pick some scriptures. And I thought, oh, I had so much fun reading through the message. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to memorize some stuff out of there. So I started picking them out. Well, any of you guys that have studied and been in different translations, you know, because the ESV is my study Bible. I bring that to church every Sunday, and that's what Michael preaches from. So, you know, but then I had read through this, but I had so many fun notes. So anyway, I opened it up, and I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, I know one thing. I'm not memorizing out the message. It is too long. Like, he uses too many words, and that's just that much more to memorize. And y'all, in that moment, the Holy Spirit said, I really don't care how many words you know. If you don't understand what I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter. We're back to the whole thing we talked about. This is not behavior modification. It is heart transformation. I need my word to be so in your head and in your mind in a way you can understand it that when the enemy comes after you, you are flinging that thing at him so fast that he is hightailing and running. And so he said, I don't want you getting hung up. Get hung in in how many words? I want you to get hung up in what I'm saying to you. God, if I can give you any advice... That's what I would tell you. Look it up in your Bible. And there were so many scriptures I had already knew that I thought, well, I'm going to try them in the message. The Lord was like, why are you doing that? You already know that one. Like that, that's again, you know, let's don't get silly about this. But I look through different translations and I'll see which one stands out to me, which one grabs my heart, which one uses words that are going to come back to me because that's my language. That's how I say that. That's, that's like, um, in, in the one I gave you last night in Matthew, when it says, don't get worked up about what, but that just stood out to me because that's what I do. I get worked up when things are not going like I think they should. So anyway, that's just my advice as you get ready. So this morning, I really, um, I'm going to pull this kind of out and I want to show you how I sort of memorize my time. This is going to be a little bit hard, but I think you'll be able to see. If you were to open this tablet up, you would have a better idea. So just, I'm going to show you this way and this way, but just picture it opened up. So if you were to even buy just a spiral notebook, okay, what I like to do is I write the scripture at the top 
the one I'm going to learn, okay? And I'll have that there. And then on the other side of the paper, I write, Lord, what do you want me to, um, what do you want me to learn? What do you want me to do? I think yours and your thing says, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to do? That's basically saying the same thing, okay? And so I'll have it laid out, but I'll write the scripture the first time. And then what I'll do is I'll just continue to write it. I'll write it three, four, five times. And there was a time in my life when I'm so busy that I'm like, I do not have time to write this thing three, four, five times. I'm going to get bored with this. But there is something about writing it over and over again that makes it stick. And what I've also been doing is I've been spending one week on each scripture. So I'm not trying to memorize something in a day. I'm not trying to do it just in one sitting with the Lord. I'm saying, okay, Lord, this is where we're going to camp this week. And so this week, every day, I'm going to write this scripture down two, three, four times. And then that's what I would go back to. But I'll tell you what has been the most important thing I've done to help it stick in my head besides pick the translation that, that kind of stands out to me is then I go and I break that scripture down. And I learn all about the words in it. And so I'll circle words. I'll ask the Holy Spirit to bring out things that will help me remember it, that he will come in and do the work in my heart, that what I, that the work I put in, that he will give me tenfold back in my memory. Because seriously, my memory, you know, I'm old now. You know, I'm trying to jump on 60 in a year or two. And so, you know, the brain is not working quite as good as it did, but when you commit it to the Lord, he does it in and through you. And so that's what I would do. And so the scripture today that we are going to do, and I was planning to do one on joy. And earlier this week, the Lord said, no, this is the one we're doing. And after through the conference, I feel so confident that he has spoken clearly to me. But we're going to look at Isaiah 4110. Okay. And um, let me see if I've got this one written down really quick in the front. So then just, uh, well, I think I do. Hang on two seconds. I'm losing my notes here. Da, 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 da. Well, I don't. So, uh, yes, I do. Here it is. I thought I did. All right, here we go. In the ESV, it says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I'd heard that scripture a lot growing up and through different teachings and messages. But when I got ready to memorize it, the Lord gave me the translation that I had marked in my scripture here. And it really, I'm going to try not to cry. It resonated with me in such a way that I cannot believe how many times he's pulled this one up for me. When, th- when disappointments hit or worry is hit, and it says, I've picked you. I haven't dropped you. Don't panic because I'm with you. There's no need to fear because I am your God. I will give you strength. I will help you. I will, it says, I will hold you steady and keep a firm grip on you. That's the one that I memorized. And I'm going to tell you, there have been times when things have gotten tough, when I've been just unsure about what to do next. And God will say, I picked you. I haven't dropped you. You see the common sense in that? Don't panic. Any of you ever panic? Got any panickers out there? We should start a club. <laughs> but it's the truth. And so to just to feel like the Lord is saying, don't panic. Don't panic. If he says don't panic, then don't panic. You know, he's going to give you what you need. So as I started to look at this scripture, I would write it down, write it down, write it down. Oops, let me pull this way. And you know what? One of the things when I said, Lord, show me some things that'll help me remember this. Show me some things that'll help me get it in. Do you know one of the first cute things that he did? It's Isaiah 41.10. As I wrote this out, I decided to list each one. I thought maybe, okay, it's like, I picked you on one line. You know, I haven't dropped you. And I wrote each one on a line. And as I did that, I just began to realize, oh my gosh, there's 10 things about Isaiah 41.10. 
And so he'll do cool things like that for you to help it stick. Okay, so there's 10 things about Isaiah 41.10 I need to know. And so I began to look at it like that. Well, then as I wrote it, and I've, you know, you've got to understand, I don't know if the, the screen they can kind of, but you know, you kind of get a visual of what that looks like. Well, then I began to see a pattern of I, 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 I. And I began to realize there was only two things that I was responsible for, and God was responsible for the rest. And that just began to give me such great comfort. Because like we talked about last night, you know, you can't be lazy. If you want a relationship with the Lord and you want to have victory in your life, you cannot be lackadaisy about it. It cannot be, well, I'm going to get my uh, little podcast in while I'm doing 25,000 other things, and that's going to be my time with the Lord today. Podcasts are amazing. I mean, it's so encouraging to listen to people's testimonies and things like that, but that's not your time with the Lord to speak to you. You're basically being encouraged by what he's taught somebody else. And I've said this a million times. I think I say it from the stage every time I speak. You can only ride on the coattails of what God's done for somebody else for so long. If you don't have some tangible time with him and some hardcore rubbing, getting the hand slapped, the whole thing, and then living with it, dealing with it, then you are not going to have a relationship with him. You're just going to know of him. And that's a totally different thing. So when I looked at this, I realized that he has all the responsibility. And I had two things. Don't panic. And what was that? Oh, and uh, don't fear. That's all I had to do, was just be obedient in those two things. And then he would do the rest. One of the other sweet things that he showed me is I looked at this. It says, I will hold you steady and keep a firm grip on you. Do you guys ever get on Wikipedia and just look and see what kind of the definitions of slang terms? You know, we live in the United States. We know what people are talking about. But the reason why Debbie pushes to look up definitions, and she and I are both so big on this, is because sometimes you use words so much that you sort of forget the weight of them, right? And so when I looked up, though, on Wikipedia, hold steady, it says to remain centered and present when everything hits the fan. Is that not amazing? So God is saying, basically, I'm going to just hold you steady. And it says, basically, then it says, to keep a, in a state of balance. How many women these days are just saying, I'm just so off balance, you know, my hormones are this, and this is happening, and that's happening, and la, 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 la. You know what? It's not saying that that's not happening, but there's a way to get balanced. And that's to put God's word in your head and in your mind and let those ditches, those death ditches, turn into trenches to truth. It's a big difference. And then when you say keep a firm grip on Keep a firm grip on you. You know what that means? To hold tightly and strongly. Do you know when I am really overwhelmed? I'm so blessed to get into the arms of my husband, big guy, six three. When he puts his arms around me and holds me tight, I feel so protected, like so protected. And I don't, I don't take that for granted. You know, you won't always have your people, and so. But whenever that said that, that I would hold tightly and strongly, I, be, I, I could feel what the Lord was saying to me. I'm going to hold you so tightly, Leanne, that it's just literally going to hold you up. You're not even going to know why you can do it. You're just going to be doing it because I'm taking over at that point. And it also went on to say it holds you up tightly and continues to hold. So, you know, you don't have to worry that he's going to drop you and move on to the next person. Like, he's going to walk you through that whole thing. But when I looked at the words picked, dropped, panic, with, fear, your, strength, help, that's what I did to try to learn this scripture, okay? I went and looked up all the words that were kind of standout words in each sentence. And then I came down at the bottom over here, and I started writing those words and those little definitions out. Picked means specifically chosen, specifically selected, called, named. This week was so wild at the store, um, berserk. 
and I am trying to help my husband right now manage a store. And anybody that's a good friend of mine knows that's not my gift. I'm artsy fartsy. I don't want to keep a ledger of anything. That's just not me. And I am literally trying to keep 50 people's schedules going, answer customers on the phone. Now, I'm great on the phone because I could talk all day. That's not my issue. I'm good at that part. But the rest of it can be really overwhelming. And it's not that I can't do it, but it just sucks the life out of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just have to put all my energy, everything I've got into it. And some days the devil will say, God, don't you hate this? And I'm like, I sure do. That's what was happening. I sure do hate this. And this week it hit like a vengeance and it was nuts. And I began to panic because I said, Lord, I have got a whole nother life outside this place. You know, did you ever have dialogue like that with the Lord? Like, I don't know what you're thinking here, but how am I going to do this conference this week? I feel so stressed out. I don't even feel joy right now. And the Lord said, Lee and I picked you. Just makes me want to cry. I haven't dropped you. I see what's happening right now. And I also see you overwhelmed, but then using the strategies. And don't you see that when you get up to speak, there's street cred behind what you're telling them. And y'all, the peace that passes all understanding that the word talks about began to guard my heart. You know, the word says, be anxious for nothing. And I just began to realize this scripture memory is so gold and we have not taken advantage of it. You know why? Because the devil said, that's too hard. That's for the smart people. That's for the teachers. That's for the people who want to impress everyone, who wants to basically impress God. And God began to show me, honey, you learn a scripture to make you holy at all. You'll never get there. Only I'm holy, but let me tell you what it will do. It will make you whole. And I had a young lady this week that was really struggling with a new baby, a month old, horrible colic. And I had checked, called her to check on her, and I said, how are you doing? And literally, I got a text back that was about on a phone this long. And she was very, you know, kind of filling me in on what was going on. And so, you know, I sent something back and I said, you guys are going to be fine. And she's talking about her husband, you know, that he's being a great support and they were kind of getting through it. And she says, I just am overwhelmed. And you know what came to my mind? I sent back and I wrote her name into the text. I said, honey, the Lord picked you to be this baby's mama handpicked you and he is not going to drop you now and I began to just type that scripture out sitting in the parking lot of this church on Thursday I'd come up here to decorate this is what I'm going to tell you the power of knowing his word not just knowing of it I would not she sent back I'm bawling thank you so much I'm going to put this somewhere so that I'll have it Do you realize if I would not have known it, guess what I wouldn't have had the ability to do? Regurgitate it right there in that minute when it was needed. You need to understand that God calls us to what some people want to call it spiritual disciplines. It just feels like harsh when you say it that way. He calls us to know his heart so that we can then be bright and beautiful in dark places in this world. When we're reflecting him, when we're reflecting God's word, we are moving mountains in people's lives. And so I just really want you to consider picking one scripture. That's that's what I'm going to give you the goal of. Try one scripture. I'll even give you a month instead of a week, okay? But I want you to begin to understand just how important it is because this is a lifeline I've memorized probably about 12 this year at this point and y'all it has been the funnest thing I dreaded you know the dread head we talked about that last night I knew God had called me to it but I was a little shaky about it I was like you know I'm kind of dreading this because I just don't want it to turn into not being fun 
Miss Carrie, when she talked about she gets up in the morning, she can't wait. Y'all, that's how I feel. Like, don't mess with my quiet time in the mornings. I will get up at four. You know, this week as I prepared and began to hear the Lord sort of tell me what cream he wanted to rise to the top, four o'clock in the morning. Because the rest of my day is nuts. And I know you moms that are getting up in the night. I'm not shaming anyone. Nobody needs to get up at four. My life and my season right now allows that of me. But I'm going to tell you, I could sleep in. I've done it before. But I will tell you, when you're falling in love with his word, when you're falling in love with him and he is beginning to change your heart in ways that you never thought you could experience, you will find yourself not having to get up. You can't wait to get up. If you're not in a place where God's word isn't just thrilling you, you need to check your translation. You need to check your understanding. And then you need to do what? We talked about this last night. Lord, help me with this unbelief I'm having that this is worth my time. The enemy tells me this is not worth my time. The world tells me this is not worth my time. And it's a lie straight from the pits of hell. Because you know why? If the enemy can keep you dumb to what God wants to do for you, he's got you where he wants you. Because guess what? It's a spiral, but it's not a spiral up. It's a spiral down. And so that's really all that I wanted to share with you guys this morning. I did um, have a few blanks that didn't get filled out last night. So Debbie, can I give those blanks to them? Y'all, I got to tell you the funny story. So I'm just going with it last night. And God keeps giving me stories I had no intention to tell. And um, he made me tell them. And I didn't, the credit card one, I didn't want to tell. I'm not going to lie to you. And Lord's up here, I'm up here talking. Lord's like, tell them about what I made you do. And I was like, I'm not telling them that. He's like, you're going to tell them. And I was like, but I don't want to tell them. You know, Gary and I laughed so hard about that. We got home. He said, they probably think I'm mean. I was telling you. I said, no, it was you. I told him, you didn't tell me to do it. God told me. You have a goal right now, and you're not helping meet the goal. And so I'm asking you to do this. So anyway, we laugh, but I've had more girls come up to, I need to hear that. I need to hear that. But you know, retail therapy is a real thing, right? (laughs) It truly is. And so y'all need to be careful with that, though. Are you using that to fill in gaps? And so anyway, but really quick, let let me give you these last blanks. I think I've got them in here where I can get to them quick. Hang on. Okay, right at the end, it is you can worry about it or you can pray about it one does nothing the other does everything and then the last one is it's time to step into joy I had a whole cute little thing I was going to do with that holding those shoes out but you know what I had the zeros up here and when I looked and realized that sheer panic went on me because I was like I don't know how long those zeros have been up there and then Taylor said I was trying to flash them at you and you didn't see it I was like I'm so sorry so anyway but I love you guys and can I pray a blessing over you before I leave the stage I just again I'm so mad I don't have my camera because it's just somebody needs to get a shot somebody did right of this this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen this many women coming together so God in the name of Jesus Lord, these women are here, and they are hungry for you. And if they didn't come in hungry for you, I pray they're just getting their appetite wet just enough to leave here and start going, maybe this thing is real. Maybe Jesus is real. Maybe he does love me. But God, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will know that you have picked them, that you have not dropped them, Lord. I pray that they will not panic, that they will choose joy, Lord, I pray that they will understand that you are their God and you're right beside them. Lord, I know that you will give them strength. So I pray they will ask for that help. And God, I just ask that they would just lean into your steadiness, your firm grip on them, Lord. And I pray that you would use them to change lives all over this city, all over this state. God, just wherever you send them in their season of life, Lord, I pray that they would live a life that's all bright and beautiful, and that would bring you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to the Equip Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when a new episode drops. And follow us on social media to stay connected. We're at GABC underscore women. See you next time.